Cool. Welcome everyone to our inaugural Comet BFT community call. It's great to have everybody here. It seems like we have a pretty full house today compared to our previous meetings. So that's cool. Glad to see everyone here. As Ali was saying, I see we have a, a decent representation from Notional. We've got SDK folks over here. We've got some folks from Say. I don't know if there are other, I mean, I see Jay over here from crypto.com. Uh, I have a bunch of people from our team. How's everybody doing today? It's good to see you again, Sam. Good. Thank you. Hi. Good to just, see just you. Want to give, just want to give an early shout out to the to the new Comet team on a, on a well-executed rebrand. And, um, and yeah, and just like a, a huge congrats on that. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Exciting times. So, I mean, now we're free to work in public uh, now that we have... Uh, the ICF has uh, registered the trademark for uh, Comet BFT, and uh, some of that process is still ongoing in different territories, but officially that's that's at least confirmed from the ICF, and we can, yeah, we can work freely in the open on a public fork. Um, so where we are at the moment, maybe what we'll do is we'll kick off with a couple of a couple of points in terms of where we are right now in relation to our initial releases. And at the moment, we're targeting an O34, a Tenement Core 034 compatible release and a Tenement Core 037 compatible release, ideally sometime within the next couple of weeks. We don't have a precise ETA on that right now. The, the main hindrance of there is our QA process, and it's not, not really a hindrance as such, it's more of a... It's something that we've got to do in order to ensure that our releases are of sufficient quality and also that they're compatible with existing tenement core releases. Our main concern there is that folks are going to be, they're not going to be executing coordinated upgrades of their main nets. And so we want to make sure that Comet BFT 03425, which will be our first release, is compatible at the network level with tenement core 03424. And then we'll also Shortly after that, hopefully we'll be cutting 0.37.0 RC3. It's the third release candidate in the 0.37 line, and that will include the first part of ABCI++. And that's uh, so ABCI 1.0, which with uh, prepare and process proposal. And then once that's done, and uh, then people people can start integrating with that. Once we have confirmation from the SDK team that the integration has gone well with the 0.37 release candidate, then we should be able to cut 0.37.0, our uh, first official major release that includes ABC, ABCI 1.0. So that's how things currently look. What we'll do is uh, on my to-do list, I have a couple of things where I want to put together two release plan issues for the 0.34 compatible release and the 0.37 compatible release. And I'll post those in a variety of different comms channels uh, once I've set them up. And then folks can can basically follow along in those those issues to see where we are in our process uh, relative to releasing our, our first releases. Uh, when, when, so, so then for the L37, probably we can reuse the one we have. It's, um, let me check. Great. It's, uh, I, I don't have it, but yeah, there, there's already a, um, a release issue for L37. Since this is not going to be L37 in Tenement Core, it seems like, we could actually use it. Awesome. Sounds good. So does anybody have any questions for us today? Like what would you like to talk about today? Um, does everybody have access to the agenda? There was one discussion topic that came from Discord. I'm not sure okay. if the, the person who posted it is here already. I guess not. Uh, it has to do with the semantic. Sorry. It has to do with the semantic versioning if uh, we plan on eventually switching to post v1. Ah, all right. Yeah, there's been a couple, couple of uh, questions around this for a long time. I know we've also been asking the same question for quite some time now, like what constitutes a 1.0 release? And the consensus so far among the people that we've been speaking to in our immediate sphere is that we should probably only cut a 1.0 release once we have clear specifications for at least the majority of the system. Right now, Comet and historically Tenement Core have effectively been 
implementations where we don't have clear specifications for large parts of the system. We obviously have specifications for consensus and we have specifications for like client protocol and a couple of other sub protocols in the system, but there's still a lot of work to be done in terms of specifying the, the needs of, for example, the, the mempool from the P2P layer. Uh, I think that consensus needs from the P2P layer. There's a bunch of other facets of the system that still need to be specified. So I think once Proposal. we get, sorry. Just to, make, just to make clear, this is ongoing work. It's not something we yeah. need to do. It's something we are doing. Yeah, it is, it is ongoing. At least the, the P2P side of things and the mempool side of things that's currently ongoing. And even on the consensus, on the consensus level, there's some more spec work ongoing at the moment. Sorry, Marco, you were saying something? Um, so uh, the SDK, like a couple, I'd say like two years ago, like AIB, there was a huge discussion about 1.0 and what 1.0 actually means. Um, and what we quickly discovered that like getting the monolithic um, and like AIB wrote a blog post because like, uh, Alessio was like kind of like trying to trying to get us to hit one point, uh, like trying to push Aaron to like basically make 1.0 like as, as, as hard as AIB could. Um, but the conclusion was kind of like the SDK as a monolith hitting 1.0 may never actually happen. Um, and just because of like the amount of technical debt, or if it were to happen, it's going to happen like in a couple of years. Um, and to like expedite the, the process, it was like, um, I think there's like what, what the decision within like the SDK was like to have like sub protocols versioned 1.0, 2.0 and so on. And so in this side, in this sense, it was like upgrade, like let's say the various modules would hit 1.0 um, and then like be iterated on um, using like V2 and stuff. And this would like allow various parts of the SDK to hit 1.0, but the monolithic itself would not um, need to hit 1.0 or it still can, but it's going to be a lot easier because now everything's like piecemealed out. Um, I think Tendermint's kind of like in the same, in a similar boat where it's like hitting 1.0 on Tendermint may take like two three years or something like that but like it also depends like, on what you, what we mean by 1.0 and what the significance people attach to it is because i mean one of the benefits of having like uh post 1.0 semantic versioning ultimately like it needs to be a it's a signal of some sort of something and what are we trying to signify by moving to 1.0 and our our thinking thus far and this is also and i mean spoken to a bunch of people about this uh, who have some strong opinions about it. And it seems as though versioning the specifications is probably more important to us uh, in the short term. And once we have like clearly versioned specifications, and it's also easier to say like when we cut a 1.0, this, this 1.0 implements this set of specifications. So consensus version 1.0 and you know block sync version this and uh, P2P version that. And it's easier to, to be able to tie like the major version to specific specifications. Um, so people know what they're getting in that version. So um, maybe maybe it's also different for us compared to the SDK. I don't, I don't know. Really... So, so, so to, to kind of finish what I was saying is like, I, I think the, I think Tender mentioned like version its sub protocols instead of like the, the global protocol. Um, because like, um, if the, the original Tendermint design was actually designed to be like a um, modular consensus layer uh, library. And right now it's like a, it's like a, it's consensus in P2P. It's not like a library, it's not a framework. Um, and so it's like, I think the decision is more so like, do you want it to be a library? Do you want it to be a framework? Or do you just want it to be like a singular product? Um, and that will kind of like help influence what 1.0 actually means. Yeah, it, at, the, still... at, the, at the end of the day, if we're releasing something, that release has to be has to have a name, and so we have to agree on what that name is going to be. Now, if we, uh, I agree with you, Marco, that we need to be more modular. This is one of the main um, focus uh, that we're going to have this year. That's why we're specifying the modules and the boundaries. That's basically uh, the, the ultimate goal is to have it modules. So, if in the end we were we got to an extreme where actually we are releasing the modules independently, then I agree with you, you don't need any, any a number anymore for, for, um, for comment. But if we still are releasing some sort of like uh, composition of those modules, we still need to give it a name so that people can refer to it. 
Yeah, and this is something that I brought up on one of the previous calls as well. The moment that we start versioning subcomponents independently, then you have to start maintaining a version compatibility matrix to say, especially if people are using it as a framework where it becomes extraordinarily complex to test that. So it's like version 1.0 to 1.2 of the consensus protocol is compatible with 1.2 to 1.4 of the block sync protocol, which is compatible with 1.1 to 1.4 of the other protocol. And like managing that and also testing that becomes exponentially more expensive as you grow the number of modules in the system. So there, there are a bunch of trade-offs that need to be made over there that we have to think about. Um, but I think that our primary goal is not to move to 1.0. Like we don't know what, ex like we haven't been able to clearly articulate what that pragmatically means. Like for us, we're far more concerned about with like uh, ensuring that we're meeting users' needs at the end of the day. However, that ends up materializing. We're not 100% sure yet as to what that's going to look like in like two years time. But we're we're dedicated to figuring that out now over the next couple of months. Um, I would I would actually like to uh, give a little bit more information on more the short term, which that, that which is quite yeah, clear in sure. our minds, which is uh, so there was a very strong reason for keeping the the naming of the versions as they used to be or the, as they are in con, in Denmin core, because basically what the the main like you know, guiding principle in, on this renaming is that we're not renaming something, everything for free. We're actually trying to limit the renaming to the least extent possible because we know uh, how dangerous it is uh, to have, you know, some um, unintended consequences just because of the renaming. And so like we want to preserve the, the ecosystem stability and therefore the names of the releases were something we didn't deem that need to change. Some, there were some ideas about why not just Maybe moving to one zero or moving to another, you know, release system totally di distinct. And basically, the conclusions we 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 got was that keeping the same numberings were was the least disruptive thing, so that people could actually, you know, people are already familiar with what's and which release, and they don't have to kind of have a mental mapping of of okay, this is releases with respect to the others. I just wanted to explain that. Yeah, we're using the versioning as like a signaling mechanism to the community. So as Sergio is saying, like we want to convey specific information with the current versions, and that is in terms of compatibility with the existing Tenement Core. Um, yeah, we, we didn't, we did, for, for instance, some of the stuff that we did not rename are the protobufs, because some people may be serializing the protobufs in such a way that they actually embed the URL of the protos in the, the raw bytes that they end up serializing. Other things include certain RPC responses, where like with events, I think, and um, I think that there were a couple of places, uh, types of evidence. Um, there were a few places where the type identifier is tenderment slash something. And if we had, had to change that, then we'd end up breaking people's integrations. And we didn't want to do that. So And and by the way, these are, in the end, after some discussions, we decided to apply that principle both for O34 and O37. So in O34 and O37, you won't expect any changes in the name of the protobufs or the RPCs or anything like this. So we should be fully, even if O37 doesn't need to be, you know, wired compatible with with uh, whatever existing, because there was nothing released. There was only released candidates uh, in O37. But even like that, we basically decided to to keep it to the to the minimum, to basically um, like yeah, to like to be on the safe side in in terms of un unintended consequences. Things yeah. that we are renaming that might affect people, for instance, is the, the home directory or the name of the executable. We, we cannot, you know, we are not tending in core anymore. So we, 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 we felt we cannot really something that is where the executable is called tenement. So that has changed and that ha might, ha might have some impact, but that, that was like a hard line we couldn't, we couldn't cross. Yeah, exactly. So also I know that a number of people had already started integrating with tenement core 0370 RC2. So if we did end up changing the protos and the RPCs and everything, then it would have had a it would have caused more friction for those folks. Now the SDK has been integrating with the second release candidate of O thirty seven zero. So we wanted to try and minimize that friction for the O thirty seven release, but we are planning on making those those kinds of changes in the O thirty eight release. So, but we'll we'll communicate all those clearly exactly exactly which changes we're intending on making, and we'll also provide upgrading guidelines there. We're also working on automated upgrade tests. So we can test 
the upgrading process, not only from Tenement Core 03424 to Comet BFT 03425, but also potentially between major releases eventually. So we're, we're trying to, to automate our QA as much as possible to sort of surface these kinds of issues as soon as possible. Then in terms of the overall stack, there's a lot of work ongoing at the moment to try and get the overall interchain stack to coordinate on, a, on um, these kinds of breaking changes. And that includes um, you know, folks from a variety of chains potentially, but uh, the SDK, the Comic BFT team, the IBC team, and potentially other teams who may integrate with uh, with our software, so that when we do have or when we do have to roll out some kind of breaking change, that somehow we we can find out like who are we going to break over here. Um, so we we're, we're trying to coordinate that work at the moment. It's still in very early stages of coordination, but. As stuff becomes clearer as to how we're coordinating there, we'll probably communicate that via our various different comms channels. So I don't know if anybody else has anything else they want to talk about on the 1.0 front. Um, I know that there were some questions as well on Slack with regard to, let me just pull up the question over here. The release tags on the common BFT Repository. I saw the two historical tags somehow snuck into the uh, the list of tags over there. I've, I've deleted those, and so we have no tags on the Comet BFT repository, and that's intentional because we haven't got any releases yet. And what I wanted to clarify over here is that Informal Systems currently maintains a public fork of Tenement Core. We haven't actually done anything to that fork because we haven't needed to do anything to that fork. Uh, since December 22nd when we created it. But we maintain that until such time that we have our first releases of Comet BFT. So if somehow a security issue is discovered in the next couple of days where we have to cut a security release, we'll do it from the public informal systems tenement fork because we, we can no longer produce tenement core um, binaries from Comet BFT. So that's one thing that I wanted to, to remind people of is that if they need Tenement Core branches and tags from the historical repository, please look to the informal systems public fork. So that's github.com slash informal systems slash tenement. And that has the, the state of the repository exactly as it was as of December 22nd with all the release tags and everything there. Just a reminder for folks. And then, um, sorry, Sergio, you wanted to say something? Yeah, there's this also, I don't know if, um, yeah, I don't mean to, you know, to change subject uh, abruptly, but somehow related. Um, so we have we have noticed that people are uh, submitting issues. And now basically there are three places where you can submit your issues. One is the old, you know, the original Tenement Core uh, um, repo. The second, some people have already uh, um, submitted, submitted some issues in the uh, informal systems fork that uh, Thane was referring to. And from to, from yesterday, since now it's it's public, you folks can, op can open issues on the um, Comet BFT um, repo. Now, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're, we're gonna take the opportunity to make a clean slate because we had uh, in, you know, around 600 Issue open issues in the in the Tenement Core repo. Some of them were stale or probably in, were in such in such ways that you couldn't follow these discussions. Especially the, the issues we took is that from now on, all the issues that have been filed on informal systems fork because you know we were not public yet until yesterday. We will be uh, tackling them from the comment fork. So you will see. You will see that uh, you know that they are you know there are some PR or something refer referring to the, actually we have already closed one in yesterday, like those ones will will take will will give get attention and also of course the ones that are opened in in the Comet BFT fork. If you have recently opened issues on Tenement Core, and you want us to you know triage them, to to read them to you know to discuss about them or and eventually to fix them. Then uh, we would uh, be very grateful if you could actually just you know copy paste them into the um, 
into our fork. Another reason is because when you open an issue, you cannot open an issue as somebody else's identity. So if we were trying to basically copy all the all those uh, issues um, over, would have been a little bit of a mess because with uh, you know the, the timestamps and the and, and who did what would, would would have been a little bit of a a little bit of like really confusing. Yeah, we we looked into uh, backing up the all the issues, the metadata, and everything from the tenement core repository and. Um, the only way to recreate an issue on a new repository, if you don't move the issue, which only owners of the, the source GitHub organization can do, uh, and we, we, we don't even have any access anymore to that original organization. But um, since we can't do that, we could try to recreate the issues, as Sergio was saying, but then GitHub's API will not allow you to create an issue on behalf of another user. So then we would end up opening all these issues with comments and they would all come from a single user, maybe a bot user or something, and that would be incredibly confusing. We thought it would be better to just leave all the issues open. Hopefully, hopefully they do stay open on the original Tenement Core repository. But I noticed that in the, in the past couple of days, uh, GitHub's automation has, for some reason, been closing stale issues on the Tenement Core repository. I don't know why. I, I think it may have something to do with the fact that the main branch reference was changed. And so... Um, There's a stale bot. There's a stale, I, I wrote the stale bot on Tenderman years ago. So it's like so, if so an issues, so it's on purpose. But now I think that that actually happened because that wasn't the standard behavior when we were working on the repository. But it seems as though the main branch reference was changed to back to like whatever it was in O34. And so as such, I think that reverted the stale bot configuration to a config from like two, three years ago or something. So yeah, basically, all, all uh, when when this force push on my, on main was done, all the PRs that were outstanding uh, contained uh, you know like hundreds and hundreds of commits because of course the reference had been changed because all those PRs yeah. were you know were, were having main as the base and now main was pointing to something totally different. So all those PRs exactly. were, are now basically useless because they have hundreds of hundreds of commits each of them. Yeah. So, I, I yeah. And so, so to reiterate what Sergio was saying, if you if you have opened any issues recently on the Tenement Core repository or on the, um, oh, uh, sorry, Marco, you have to run inform us, get a work update on things. What do you mean? Just like what what is kind of like being worked on by the team. Um, yeah. yeah. So in my initial update, when we first started the call, I was talking about how we're currently working on QA to get the releases out. And then are you talking about the priorities beyond the releases? Um, uh, so, so okay, so that's the, that's, I thought that was like one of the updates. Um, uh, so, sorry. So, no, I was just trying to try and understand what you were looking for. Because uh, uh, if, if you want to take I, a look at the... I, I, I just thought the, the, the QA was like, one of many updates. Um, I didn't realize it was the only one. So I was just kind of like waiting to hear the other updates. Yeah, if um, I think that we... so the next the next step, um, you know, um, after these uh, releases, the QA that leads to the releases, our our attention is going to shift back as as explained in the by by saying in the um, meeting meeting notes at the beginning of the meeting. So we our attention is shifting back to um, uh, ABCI two zero. In that, in on that front, so it's been like two weeks. I didn't touch on it because we've been basically focusing on renaming. But off the top of my head, uh, so we were, I think, code complete except for two or two or three tasks, which is just going through, you know, going through making sure that nothing is forgotten. But in 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 terms of the logic, we're code complete. Um, and then the work that was left there, like more sizable work that was there, left there, which we'll probably do in parallel was up updating the specification because we still have the specification from O37. We need to basically go back to O36 and, and grab everything that was left out in O37 as specification, as far as the specification is concerned for ABCI. And then also updating the documentation. So we need to, to get to that as well. Once this is done, and this was actually the initial uh, plan we had, uh, you know, before the, you know, the recent events happened, uh, would be, running uh starting you know, starting the quality assurance for 038 so cutting the 038 release 
and doing quality assurance and OCT release, which is going to be like um, the few fixes that we have in main, plus the feature branch that contains uh, ABCA 2.0. So that's basically the, then um, at this point, so our planning was more ambitious, but our planning happened before all the renaming had to be, you know, uh, rescheduled. Uh, but initially, uh, but this is now, this has now become stretched. Initially we were planning on doing in this quarter, we, were, we are we are planning on doing, I think we're gonna advancing there nevertheless, um, advancing specifications for peer-to-peer -peer and for consensus gossip. And then also uh, in, continuing the bandwidth improvements that we were doing in Q4 and the storage optimization. I don't know what if I, I forgot anything roughly uh, roughly speaking oh, those here. Are major things. Um, so that, that, that's, what, that's the main stuff that we're focusing on for Q1 this year. If folks want to take a look at what our current priorities are, I shared a link. Let us think that I shared in the chat to our project boards. And what I'll do is I'll just share my screen here temporarily and I can show you what that looks like. Um, let me know if anybody can't access it, but our our project board, the, the major priorities view of our project board, consider these things. These are not things that are delivered within a particular time frame, but these are what, this is a decision-making framework that we currently use to decide on what it is that we're going to be working on, what we're prioritizing. So as you can see right now, our top priority is renaming the repository to Comet PFT. And you can take a look at what's left on that tracking issue uh, by going through to the issue itself. So as Sergio was saying, this particular use case speaks to, or this particular uh, major priority relates to ABCI++ or ABCI 2.0. Um, then we're looking at operator cost optimization related work. And then we want to be able to roll out functionality faster in future, but do so reliably, et cetera. And you can take a look at our, our priorities. Um, and what, what we then do is we break these things down into smaller sub-problems and we try to schedule them on a quarterly basis. So you can go into our, our 2023 Q1 board. And so you were saying because of the emergency rename operation that we had to undertake, uh, we are going to have to make some adjustments here in the next week or two. But this is these are the main things that we're going to be focusing on for the remainder of Q1 once we have the initial comet releases out. I hope that helps to clarify what we're currently working on. Yeah, so as a suggestion, I think that for, for external members, probably a good thing if you want to see what, what we're up to and uh, how we're advancing is going to this this last tab, 2023 Q1, that uh, Thane was showing lately. To me, that is kind of the reference on kind of the promises we, we supposed, you know, we're supposed to be making for the end of Q1. I insist these these promises were made before uh, we were forced to anticipate all the all the renaming um, work, and became clear they had to be tackled uh, as soon as the the year started. So exactly, uh, we will we will have to uh, adjust a little bit uh, some of those tasks there and and making uh, stretching stretch goals rather than than officially things committed we committed to. As I said, uh, the current thinking, we haven't finalized this discussion yet, but the current thinking, keep thanking me, I'm honest here. The current thinking is that we're probably gonna prioritize ABCI 2.0. So ABCI 2.0 would stay as one of the priorities of the of the quarter and uh, storage and bandwidth improvements. We will, the promise will become, we will make some progress there, but not, no, you know, no major commitments on on you know those priorities being finished or something like this. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, the interestingly, the one of the um, optimizations that William implemented towards the end of last year is actually going to make its way into Comet 3425. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the, what kind of impact that's going to have, and that's in terms of reducing the bandwidth used by uh, consensus vote gossiping. It's not a it's not a gigantic improvement, but it is a it is non a, a, a non negligible improvement in bandwidth consumption for operators. So we're looking forward to seeing how that's going to impact folks once we once we cut that release. Yeah, my, my way of saying is that it's like it is it is substantial in the sense that it's noticeable when you go in yes. pro, in Prometheus, etc. And the chains were two lines of code. Yeah. yeah, that's that's William's magic, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, it was a really good catch. Um, so yeah, as, as, just to reiterate what Sergio was saying, we're going to prioritize ABCI 
and then if we have additional capacity to be able to to work on just on extra stuff this quarter we'll be working on things based on that list of priorities the major priorities that i shared in the project board hope that clarifies things for folks Jacob, any interest in the bandwidth improvements? Or anyone else from Notional? Yeah, I guess uh, you are, go ahead. So, yes. Ooh, about the bandwidth improvements. Actually, I've been talking with Jorge. Um, uh, the, I want to, I assume that you've seen the thing that I reported to Hacker One in twenty one. Sorry, uh, I'm not you've sure not. what you're okay. referring to. Uh, um, did, you, did you report something recently? No, this was in twenty twenty one, and um, it's it's as of yet unresolved. Since it's a recorded call, I'll I'll, I'll skip details. What I'll say is that I talked with Jorge. Uh, Jorge can't think of any way other than intentionally that his issue gets triggered. And I'm going to say that it, it sounds really close to the thing that I reported. Um, and bandwidth briefing uh, was a symptom of that. Um, and by the way, I, I don't know if, when you said bandwidth issue, if you meant this thing that Jorge reported, but actually that's something I'd love to talk about, the, the, Jorge, the thing that Jorge reported. And it piqued my interest because the way that it looked to me was that it was, the thing in 21, it required pretty significant effort on the part of the attacker. The thing Jorge mentioned, same. I, I won't go into details. I figure maybe we do that at another time. Um, for the one that Thane mentioned, yeah. Oh, yeah, Thane, was it reported by uh, Jorge Hernandez from Stargaze? Um, I can take a look. Yeah, I just I just found it, um, Jacob. I, while you were talking, I, I just found it. I, th I think you're referring to issue number four from the informal systems fork. So the one that is called Tendermint, the informal systems fork that we have for emergencies. Uh, is, is that yeah, is that yeah, there? That's correct. So, yeah, that's that's what I was talking about. And the one that Thane was mentioning wasn't that more of like an ongoing thing. Uh, so so for, uh, I can tell you for uh, number four if you're referring to that one. So we looked at the code, we examined the, you know, the particular paths from that reporting. Actually, it was also reported on, on, on Discord, by the way. And um, um, basically, we, we agreed with the submitter that, um, you know, that the, the solution would be to add um, some pausing time there uh, because it's consistent with the rest of the error branches of that part of the code. And um, then, then the submitter was actually discussing about deeper solutions, like more, like more holistic solutions. We decided not to go that way because we don't yet have a specification. We it's ongoing, so we're working on it on the specification of the gossip of consensus, but we, it is not finalized. So any like further fer, further fetched uh, solution, we decided to rule it out, and uh, and so basically this is now merged into uh, I think into the three branches of Comet BFT. So in principle, it is supposed to make it for the next releases that we're going to, basically the ones we, we are about to QA. I don't know if that was clear enough. So, so the um, issue is closed. Uh, okay. The issue is, oh, that's beautiful. I mean, that's excellent. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that the bandwidth issue, may, maybe the bandwidth issue that was brought up uh, on this call just now is actually the progressive attempt to uh, reduce ban reduce ban I think we lost Jacob. Yeah, it's yeah. for it's for reducing uh, bandwidth. Exactly. Yeah. So we, we discovered that um, uh, William actually discovered uh, towards the end of last year that uh, 
consensus vote gossip was consuming a tremendous amount of bandwidth and he made a a, a two-line logic change that basically reduced the bandwidth consumed just by consensus votes uh, by half so it's a, it's a pretty substantial amount of uh, bandwidth in terms of relative to uh, the, the data used by vote gossip that's that's really good um Kang, uh, are you uh, here? Jacob, Jacob, are you mm -hmm. interested in, in are you interested in the particular issue that like the particular PR that that uh, we're talking about here? So you can compare. I can actually pull it up for you. Yeah, absolutely. That would be great. Um, and uh, I'm I'm actually curious if Kang is on the call still. Uh, he was before. I'm on the call. You are. Oh, sweet. Okay, Kang. When they bring this PR up. Could you kind of just assess if it might reduce the issue that we faced? Okay, the, the part that is publicly disclosed for the issue that, that we faced was that like basically you can gossip invalid data. And if this reduces consensus bandwidth by half, I think, that this might also reduce like the surface area of the thing that, uh, well, so Kang and I kind of tag teamed this one. I wrote the H1 report and Kang did an incredible, <laughs> he modified Tendermint to figure out what was going on under the hood uh, to cause these circumstances. So yeah, bring it up, please. That's awesome. Um, cool. well, what, what is the PR number? So you just posted it in the chat. So oh. it's, uh, oh. this was the PR back on Tenement Core ninety seven sixty. So this is this is in uh, Comet PFT as well. Yeah, be careful because uh, so when I, the, and the the link that Andy posted is very similar. So be careful. That one is actually the RFC that. Uh, so this is like Andy's link is like the holistic effort we started in Q three. Sorry, in Q four, and we are supposed to be continuing this. Well, now it's as I, as we said before, it's a stretch. It became a stretch code because of the renaming and rebranding. But basically, the ninety seven oh six is like the RFC we worked on in order to see you know where. You know the places what need improvement in general that will span several quarters and the 9760 is the two line chain code change that reduces the number of vote gossiping, gossiping by a half as Zane was uh, was saying so it may or may not be related to what you're talking about jacob but i'd be interested to chat about this further um we can chat about this asynchronously i think it's not great yeah probably so um awesome. it could Break out a little group uh, with Kang, and, and he could probably like shoot over his findings too. Yeah, awesome. Um, actually, if it's just the consensus votes, I think the answer might be no. By the way, cool. Yeah, feel free to ping me on Slack, and then we can try and coordinate on that. Awesome. Great. So I mean, we are in the process of compiling the 2023 technical roadmap. I see this is one of the things that uh, we had on the agenda for today. And the moment that we have an official roadmap, we'll definitely share that. Uh, but in the meantime, as I mentioned before, we can take a look at our, our top priorities. And we're going to try and figure out how to, how to schedule those priorities in the coming months. Um, oh, yeah. so yeah. Same. So I, yeah. I have a uh, I have a question about the uh, stay sync. So yes. so in the coming BFT issue twenty seven. So Sergio already addressed the issue about the uh, local snapshot, and I think this yeah the currently this issue is is low priority. But I think <clears throat> most of uh, production network has has the same issue. So it's very difficult to to do the. Uh, Stay sync through snapshot because the snapshot uh, chunk is very large. Like for example, in our network we have several hundred chunk uh, chunks, uh, snapshot chunks doing the uh, stay sync. So it's very easy, uh, like uh, a broken doing the uh, stay sync. So yeah, just wondering, yeah. maybe I don't know because because the someone already have uh, the implementation on it. So 
just thinking maybe someone can take take time to look into it. And um, <clears throat> for my understanding, it's <clears throat> it's not difficult issue for for adding this feature into the uh, into a uh, common BFT or tandem BFT. Do you, yeah. do you have a reference to like a one of the old pull requests or issues that that you were talking about? I, I think Sergio already already have have that. So okay. in the issue issue twenty seven. Yeah, yeah. Jay, Jay replied to one of the issues we cool. copied over. Oh, so awesome. one of the issues we copied over, you know, uh, like on December twenty third. <laughs> ah yes. Uh, and so one of these issues. So Jay actually added some comment today. I actually happened to to see it. Thanks Jay for bringing it up. Um, yeah, we, we are aware that there was some ongoing discussion uh, like last last quarter, like in Q4 about this. Uh, we are aware that there is a PR, that there is implementation. The thing is that we want, you know, we want to do things like um, make sure that we're not, you know, that we're not letting in something that might be, it wouldn't be the first time, by the way, that, that might be, you know, that we might have second thoughts later on. So my uh, uh, saying, let me know if you, if you agree with me, but I think that the main thinking here is that we need to spend some time, and um, we need to prioritize that. We need to spend some time to to explore the the solution space, to understand the problem, to explore the the solution space, and taking the solution that we know uh, exists already as a PR as one of the possible solutions, but, but really not being like biased to something that is already implemented if it is not the best possible solution. Uh, about prioritize, prioritize, I know that in the end it, it comes down to a prioritize, prioritization thing. So, um, Jay, what I would like to to tell you is that okay, I, I'll take an, I, I, an action item. So I will actually look at this at this issue after the meeting to see if it is properly prior, you know, put in the backlog, and then I would ask you to go there. I, I will actually, if it's not, I will try to basically, according to my, you know, to my thinking, you know. Uh, prioritize it with respect to other issues that are there. And then I would like, I will, I will, I would ping you and ask you to see if you agree with that. And if you don't agree with that, maybe we can rediscuss if you think that other things that are deemed more important in the, in the board, in your opinion, are not, uh, are not as important as this, as this one. Is that okay for you? Is that acceptable? Uh, sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, it, I think it's not just, just our issue. I mean, a lot of production, they, they, yeah, they have the same issue. Yeah. So yeah, I just yeah. want to bring bring up yeah, it, it will be more, uh, the issue will be become more more seriously yeah serious yeah because yeah. the the yeah the stencha is pretty huge exactly yeah. yeah and and I mean like there there's actually multiple layers to this issue here if I remember correctly you know operators have to stay synced because of um, storage related issues so so basically what I'm saying is. We, there are like short, medium, and long-term things that we have to do to try to address this because people are using state sync as a as a workaround for some of the operational issues as it relates to storage, and we also we also need to address the storage issues so that people don't have to state sync so much. But state sync itself also needs attention. So, yeah, as we said, we'll we'll, we'll try to prioritize this uh, as best we can with all the other priorities that we can, we're currently focusing on. Awesome. Is there anything else anyone wants to chat about? Anything else for today? Um, yeah, that's kind of it for me today. Oh, actually, quick, quick item. Yeah. Um, Uh, in terms of implementing Comet, next couple weeks in the SDK layer, or? Uh, Julian's here. I mean, uh, I saw that, Julian, you were working on the SDK integration with Comet, right? Right, that's correct. I will uh, start again on it a bit later, probably today or tomorrow. First with main oh, and then uh, all the awesome. way down. Uh, Jacob, just to, to clarify, uh, um, which which uh, release line are you? Are you doing with thirty four? You doing with thirty four? Yeah, thirty four is probably going to be really the target. You know, my main question is is actually about migrating. So main nets. 
Mm -hmm. What I can take what, from from the inside, what I can tell you, and um, Jasmina saying, uh, keep me honest here. I think we are like we are merging the last PRs that we wanted to merge before you know before we actually start a QA. We have already the QA ready, in the sense that uh, you know something we hadn't tested e e ever, at least automatically in the past, which um, Thane referred to, which is testing. You know, a mixed network with you have O3424, which is Tenon Core, and O3425, which is uh, a Comet BFT. They're supposed to work together, and we have been working actually on, on improving our test frameworks, both E2E and the, uh, you know, digital ocean based, in order to test that in an automatic way. So to test a big, well, a big or a small, or, but basically testing the, the fact, the scenario where there are a lot of nodes that are working and they upgrade in an uncoordinated un manner. So this, yeah. the thing is that is done. Now the tests are, are about to start. We didn't, if we didn't start it yet today, it's just because we are, you know, focusing on, on on merging the last PRs. We need to get to make it for for that for that release. Things that were, you know, that that were actually pending. Mm -hmm. But as it currently stands, the you can actually start integrating with the code if you pick the, the latest commits on the O34X branch. You can start integrating the code on the O34X branch because we've done all the renaming. We've renamed the module. We've you know, we've, we've done the bulk of the uh, the work that we wanted to do for each of the different release lines. Um, as Sergio says, we have a couple of PRs outstanding, and then we've got to run our QA process. And if anything comes up during the QA process, we'll have to, um, thanks, Sam, um, we'll, we'll have to um, make a couple of changes there to fix those bugs. But so barring that, we should be able to cut those uh, those releases pretty quickly after we've done our QA process. But yeah, you're free to start integrating already with those particular release branches. So you can integrate with the O34X release branch um, in the Comet BFT repository. If you are interested in the O34 line, uh, you can integrate with the O37X release branch if you're interested in the O37 line. And we generally don't recommend integrating with the main branch because that's where um, the, the most rapid change happens in the repository. But I understand also for updating dependencies, Julian, on your side, it makes sense to to integrate from main downwards. Cool. Hey, thank you. Cool. Awesome. And as always, like if anybody has any runs into any trouble with Comet, if anybody discovers any issues there, feel free to reach out either to one of us directly on Slack or and we have this uh, we have a Telegram channel now. Oh we have yeah we have a Telegram channel. We have Discord uh, a dedicated Discord channel for Comet BFT. Um, feel free to log issues if you on the Comet BFT repository if you do discover any, or and also feel free to open discussions. Like generally, if you want a a topical discussion uh, that will be preserved over time, where it could be like the, the the nature of the discussion is such that it could be valuable for uh, future developers and contributors, then we generally recommend that you submit. Um, questions and requests, not really requests, but questions and uh, discussion points to the, the discussions section of the GitHub repository, which is over here. And you should be able to link to our various different socials from the comma.pft.com site. Awesome. Excellent. So if there's nothing else, um, does anybody have any closing questions, concerns, feedback for us? I would just like to express that we are very happy to be, you know, in the open, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to talk to you guys about Comet BFT that we've been, you know, refraining from talking to talking about it for for some weeks, and we are basically uh, excited about this new, you know, this new uh, period and. Uh, and we are, you yeah, know, we are passionate, and we're gonna do our best to, you know, to to make your life easier in the end. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Awesome. That's it for today. Thanks very much, everyone, for attending. It's good to see so many people over here, and look forward to seeing you all next time. Catch yes. you later. Thank you. See you next Thank time. You see you later. Thank you, everyone. Bye -bye. See you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye-bye.